Yeah, uh, thank you everyone. I, this talk for me is a really, really special one. Uh, a, because it's in the Vale of Pusey, uh, and Avebury for me is a very, very special place for me. Uh, and it's somewhere I come uh, sort of year after year. If I, if I spend too much time away from uh, this area, I have to suddenly come back. Uh, and so, you know, I, I can remember turning up here, I, think, I can't remember, I think it was February last year, I decided I haven't been up to Avebury for ages, and I decided to come up and it's just like standing in this, uh, I think it was about four cent, but the, the wind chill was about minus 30 or something, and I can remember you know, walking along uh, Avebury. But the other reason why today is really, really important is that because who we've actually got here today, uh, I think what happened was uh, myself and Mark uh, been in contact. Uh, you know, I've got these amazing people on the forum, uh, and suddenly, you know, I sort of was asked to do a talk, and you know, so like Malcolm, who I realised, of course, another one on the forum, and then of course I suddenly hear that we've got uh, David coming from Ireland. Uh, Mark has come all the way from Nottingham, Paul Meltrum, <laughs> Jason Essex, and uh, have I missed anyone else out? Yeah, yeah, yeah I said David from Ireland. Oh, yeah, Whitney. sorry, Whitney. Yeah, oh, right. Whitney. Just up the road. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't mention Whitney because you know who lives there. Yeah. So. <laughs> but for me, it's I feel we're making, and this isn't a one-man thing that I'm doing, and very nice of Malcolm saying all the things that I'm doing. I couldn't be doing what I'm doing without the support of an awful lot of people. And now it's, it, it's I feel this year is the year where suddenly, you know, I, I did a talk the other day in Brighton, and then suddenly somebody said, oh, do you know so-and-so? He's got a mailing list of so many. And I had to go back to Brighton and do a talk to a load of other people. It's like, it's all connecting up. It's all the networks are connecting up. And, and this has happened in the last few months and it's really, really, really exciting. So I just think that we might be sitting, you know, in this beautiful pub in this wonderful village here in some of the most beautiful countryside. But together we are changing the course of this planet. We really are. And it's, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. Uh, I think the dark have been in control. Call it, you know, it's very difficult to put labels on what it is we're actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're not really opposing. Well, well, I suppose we are opposing them, but we're, we're just showing them. We're saying we're not playing, actually. <laughs> we're not fighting them. Uh, we're, we're rebelling by not playing their games. But I think it's about 13 millennia that they've been in control and they've rewritten our history. It depends how far down the rabbit hole you want to go. But once you go down there, it, it gets quite interesting, as I'm sure you all know. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about monopoly money. Uh, just to give me an idea of how much to sort of emphasize stuff, who is familiar with my website? I know that a load of you are, and uh, and if I said uh, fictitious entities or straw man to people, would that make any sense to anyone? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we've got a few. Who wouldn't? Don't, don't be shy. Just to, so that I know, I don't want to. What I don't want to do is start using words and have a load of, sort of blank faces. <coughs> so uh, it's a matter of just me trying to pitch it at the right level. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about Monopoly Money uh, and about the website and how I think it's a little bit fraudulent, to say the least. And also I'm going to be talking about the imminent global financial meltdown. Now I've been talking about the imminent global financial meltdown since 2007. And because I think uh, Marilyn and Alan were there, weren't you? And uh, without being big headed, <laughs> Uh, uh, who was it who asked me? Somebody asked me, when do you think it's going to happen? Uh, you said September. I said September. And you were spot on. Yeah, yeah. When, if you go to the 
BBC website and look up credit crunch or credit crisis and look at the, the uh, thing. The reason I was spot on is because I've been reading up on the main calendar, but I'll, I'll be talking about this. But the, the reason why I could see what was going on then quite precisely, uh, I'm, I'm now looking at it with a lot more information. So in the second half, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about what I think is going to happen. Okay, so I can do the sort of monopoly stuff, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that. But the second half, I want to say sort of why why I think that this year is actually very, very important. Uh, a lot of people talk about May and calendar in 2012. I think all the big changes are going to be happening this year, and I think they're just about to kick off. So anyway, uh, oh, and the important thing, <laughs> it's almost as a time. The important thing is, we're talking about a global financial meltdown. There is nothing to fear. These are the bars of our prisons of finally coming down. This is our freedom awaits us. And because none of it, yeah, it's very difficult to know what freedom actually feels like when you've lived in a prison all your life. But uh, when you actually see how much the prison, I'm sure a lot of people in this room actually are understanding how much we've been manipulated. Uh, and a lot of it is subconsciously, psychologically, but uh, we're breaking free of that. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, don't believe anything I say. Uh, I might be a government infiltrated spy or whatever, uh, basically just to confuse you. So you, at the end of the day, you've got to use your discernment. Okay, and the other thing I say is uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. anyone come across Dr. Wayne Dyer's stuff? Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, if you haven't, and you've ever got five minutes, you want inspiration, get on YouTube and put in Dr. Wayne Dyer. I mean, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, the ultra, ultimate ignorance is the rejection of something you know nothing about and refuse to investigate. So uh, I'm sure everyone is here because they, uh, you, you're here not because you're ignorant, but because you're wanting information and, uh, and sharing it with, with other people. So Dr. Wayne Dyer. Okay, I'm going to start off with a very brief history, not of money, but of, of trading, okay, so, and it's very brief, because I'm not an expert in anything, uh, as Jordan Maxwell says, uh, although I would actually say he was, uh, but just talking about money, I'm uh, trying to get a concept of what money is, and how we've used it, so we start off, probably the first thing that we ever used was bartering, now a lot of it, advantages of this system, the main thing is the government can't take a cut very easily. I think they did actually when we worked because they'd want so many chickens or whatever. But when we were all just swapping our, our labour, and I know a lot of people are now going back to doing this now. So uh, bartering, a lot of advantages. Disadvantages, you know, it, it, you know, if, if you, uh, I mean, we, we get used to the plastic cars and say, oh great, you know, have a meal or whatever. We don't have to carry around chickens or gold or potatoes or things like that. So there's a, a lot of disadvantages, but a lot of advantages. What came after bartering? Well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, most people wouldn't know that. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Forget that for a moment. Calorie shells. Well, yeah, uh, in, in certain countries they did. In this country, uh, after bartering, I think that we did actually go on to precious metals first, before sticks actually. Does anyone know what the sticks are? Right. Yeah, yeah, we see we've got some very we've got some <laughs> very educated people. I did a talk the you know the last time I was talking Brighton we had one person knew what the tally sticks were. So <laughs> I, I'm going to, yeah, yeah. I'm just jumping ahead. He, 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 Malcolm is talking about So the next thing, of course, came was gold, and those are sort of Anglo-Saxon gold coins. And when you look at some of the uh, inscriptions, there's already uh, esoteric sort of occult uh, symbols on a lot of those coins. <coughs> 
So obviously, uh, precious metals, they realised that certain metals uh, uh, didn't rust and uh, became valuable, and they were also... Uh, why why did they recognise gold as valuable? I have no idea, apart from the fact that it doesn't rust and it's... Rarity. It's, it's rarity, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> now, another... We talk about sticks, tally sticks. It was. It wasn't so much of a. Well, it it, it was, and it wasn't a, a currency, but it was an amazing <coughs> way of accounting when most people were illiterate. And basically, you got a, a was it a, a birch or a willow, or whatever. Basically, you got a stick. You whittled it until it had four flat sides. You then started putting notches in it. Uh, and you'd then write the name of the two parties involved. You then, sorry, you'd split the stick and then write the names of the parties involved. So if you basically uh, deposited money with a bank or a person or a merchant, uh, you could actually take your stick and see what you were owed. Now, the great thing is this, is whereas every single form of electronic banking, I think, has been cracked, already this was totally you, nobody has yet come up with a technology to actually c create a another stick you know that's that split in two you know you can't do it you get two stick every single stick this is the great thing you see it's, it's using the same technology as we're made out of and so every single person in this room every single person on the planet is totally unique as is every single stick so it was a very very successful form of uh, very successful form of both accounting and if you like currency. Now the great thing is, is these sticks the handle of them was called the stock and you held the stock and of course yeah you always you held the stock because that was the handle and that, that and then you know sometimes uh, if you know people would actually sell their stock their stock would change hand and they'd go to the market and so you'd have a little you know market town much perhaps like Marlborough they might actually start buying and selling stock and on stock markets you know there'd be live stock because you might swap your you know it's it's wonderful it all comes into the words it all comes into the words <laughs> and that's how we get that's how we get stock And of course, there's, uh, there's your livestock. <laughs> right, so then you get the next sort of, you, you know, so we've, we've done our tally stocks. You, get, then you then get this, somebody had this wonderful idea of lending money with interest. Before we get on to fractional reserve banking, but the first thing, as soon, I, I think our problem started, not where, you know, before we lost any value to our currency, but as soon as we started people charging interest. Because the moment you start charging interest on capital, money automatically goes to those with money, and those without money, basically, as soon as you do that, it's like, tipping the floor slightly and then all the marbles tend to go to one end and automatically you get a movement of uh, wealth from rich to poor and it's, it's, this is back to the monopoly game always you know those people that get a few early hotels yeah you, you know you don't really have to sort of play the game out we always do because you like to see that people suffer but you know it's like, you know you realize that you know if you've got a couple of dream bungalows on old kent road and someone's got a hotel or mayfair you're, you're stuffed basically mm -hmm. because that's the way it goes but the other thing about you know so you've got you've got the fact paying interest the other thing fractional reserve banking is basically fraud it's fraud it's lending something you haven't, got. you haven't got. Now, people go along to the London <laughs> School of Economics and do PhDs. And if, if, if there was a 10-year-old child in the room that 
had a tiny little bit of common sense. If you said, look, we're going to set you up, you can lend your friends money, charge them interest, but you know, money that you don't have, so I'll give you a pound, and then you can lend all your mates. It's, it's fraud. And yet, because we're conditioned, uh, I, I, I looked at the, uh, I, I do like going on the uh, Bank of England website, and they do this PDF, and it's really wonderful, you know, this is downloadable file. It's like a little booklet, and it talks about money. Uh, it's brilliant. And it says things like, uh, oh, we used to trade in gold, uh, but this is no longer, it says, no longer practical. But it didn't explain why. It's no longer practical because they've stolen it from us. <laughs> but it, it, it just said, well, it's no longer practical. Well, why isn't it? You know, it's like, oh, well, there's not enough gold to go around. Well, then each piece would be worth an awful lot of money. But yeah. So... Uh, and fiat currency, so fractional reserve banking is basically, I'm sure pretty well everyone knows, but if you don't, it's basically the way that banks lend money that they don't have. If a bank has a hundred pounds, it can lend out, I think either eight or nine, uh, they've changed the rules slightly recently uh, and tried to keep a little bit more uh, uh, value, but I mean, at the end of the day, and this isn't cent just central banks, we're talking about commercial banks can lend money that they haven't got. And they still end up going tits up. You know, it's unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. Fiat currency it is basically worthless paper. Totally worthless paper. Uh, at one time, a pound note, sorry, a, well, a pound was basically a pound, a, a ticket for, or a bill, if you like, for a pound of sterling silver. Now you wouldn't get an ounce of, uh, of silver for it. So, uh, you know, we... we but they, the, still, they still promise to pay them. They do, yes. Uh, so and it's an empty promise. It's an empty promise, totally, totally. Ah, no, if you go to the Bank of England website, which I was on today for some reason, it says that what they'll do is, what they do is, the way they keep the currency strong is by making banknotes, which are very difficult to actually uh, copy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's mad. It's mad. But they say that that promise to pay the bill, that if your uh, fifty pound note is all crumpled up and it's got a bit of a rip on it, uh, then you can take it to the bank and they'll give you a brand new one. <laughs> Which I think is a brilliant deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You've got, you have got to laugh. You have got to laugh, haven't you? Okay, so uh, I think this is where we've got a scary sound effect. Right, okay. No more cheesy sound effects. So what, what I do, and those of you who are aware of the site will see, you know, you know uh, seen some of the talks. Uh, what I, what I did, you know, I heard a lot of people talking about monopoly, but I thought, what we do, let, let's have a look at the similarity between uh, monopoly and the global financial system. So, and when you start going through it, it's actually, it's actually quite interesting. First of all, it's just a game. Even though, you know, the global system, the unfortunate thing is that uh, as you say, people do suffer in this. Uh, when we realise it's a game, we can actually step above it and, and, and step into our power. Unfortunately, the banks, you know, people talk about, oh, starving people in Africa and there's awful lot of people starving in the world. It's because of banking. No other reason. No other reason. It's because uh, and we're talking about you know, currency and, and, and paper. Most of it is, of course, is just created on computer screens. And because some countries owe the central banks an awful lot of money because they've been set up, basically, to, you know, basically so that their resources are sucked out, yeah. sucked out yeah. of the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, people are starving, people are dying because of banking in the control <coughs> system. So it is just a game, and when you realise it's a game, I, I, when I didn't realise this was a game, and I thought I was in loads of debt, I used to get quite intimidated. Once I realised it was a game, <laughs> things changed, you know, hugely for me. 
So, it's basically a game. You need a token to play the game. The currency uses worthless paper, I've spoken about that. The bank never goes broke. The object is to bankrupt all opponents, and to win, you need to know all the rules. So let's just have, oh, and the game has to end sooner or later. That's another one I've, I've added a couple in, actually. So. so first of all, it's just a game. When you realize that that's, that's what their game plan is, and it is, you know, and they do it with individuals and they do it with countries. Once you realize that that's the game, and it's not just the banks, it's, it's done through the government, it's done with, basically, uh, it's done through corporations. You know, if you sit and watch the television and you watch all those adverts, it's, oh, the adverts don't affect me. Well, subconsciously, they affect all of us. Well, you, know, with, you know, with us, uh, you know, you've actually got to sort of undo the programming, if you like. But once you realize it's a game, uh, you know, their, their plans to take you for every penny you've got, your plans to stop them. And so interesting <coughs> that, uh, you know, we don't have to talk about personal insolvency, but the rates of personal insolvency are obviously very high. Token to play the game. Okay, so we must have done this in, what was it, 2007 I first started doing this. This was before the website. Uh, and I, 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 was, I was sort of done, and I haven't actually done this one uh, fully. So the token to play the game. Now, in Monopoly, that's my favourite one, it's a racing car. Now, I'm sure everyone knows what the token is in the global financial system, uh, but there's a couple of people that don't know, but I'm not going to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, it's difficult because a lot of you are really, really clued up on this, but I know there's a few of you that have sort of come along that might not be. So. Uh, Basically, when you get a credit card, you will notice that you have cardholder name there, and the cardholder name is always in capitals. Or, on your bank statement, if it's not in capitals, it will always have Mr, Mrs, Miss, it will always have a title. Okay? Between the capital letters, it's interesting use of the word capital and title, yeah, they call it title case don't they? Yeah, it sometimes, title case, capital, all these words, you know, if you notice the words, you have title to something, you have title to the capital, very interesting. That's how they create a, uh, a token for you to play the game, basically through nothing more clever than words. Your name in capital letters isn't you. That's your token to play the game. And when they put, you know, Mr. or Mrs. or whatever, that's your token, that's not you. That's not you, your common law, flesh and blood, sovereign being. That's okay, promise yourself that. So, they, what they what they actually do is create a, if you like, a fictitious entity. Now, the reason is, basically, the only real law is the law of contract in, in commerce. And so they create this fictitious entity. But anyway, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. Because you have to have an authorised signature. Who are you authorising? You're authorising yourself. Well, why would you need to authorise yourself if it was you? Why wouldn't you just say your signature? <coughs> but I'll be coming back on to that. So I've glossed over that a little bit quickly. I'll be coming on to that. The currency used is just totally worthless paper. I don't think I really have to go. They've taken away. I'm sorry if, if anyone's not aware of this, but we did have a gold standard up to quite a long time ago. In fact, we did have gold reserves uh, of some, and they still tell us that we do have some. I, I really don't believe it. Uh, the, you know, so they've taken away the gold. Uh, they, can, can anyone remember when, you know, uh, six, I can remember when the sixpences used to be silver. They used to put them in Christmas puddings. 
Silver Thutney bits. Silver Thutney bits, isn't it? Was it? Yeah. Oh, right. So, no, this is a, well, apparently I was a little bit late. But I can remember <laughs> when there was... Do you want to put sixpence in? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 silver. Perhaps they never silver. I'm obviously too young, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. But there was a time when, when, when they, uh, you know, you used to have gold sovereigns and you used to have silver shillings, yeah? Gold and silver are useless. They are merely tokens. Well, you say that, but saying that gold is actually you can't use them. No, no, I, I totally agree with you. However, gold is used extensively in the computer business, and it, so it does have some sort of intrinsic value. But yeah, but it, it's, I, I do agree with exactly with what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do agree with what you're saying. However, because it's got wonderful qualities as a metal. Uh, it, it, like copper is actually worth something because uh, it, it doesn't rust like mild steel so it's worth a little bit more than mild steel because it's got certain qualities but I do understand what you're saying but the currency is just worthless paper but the thing is they've taken the precious metals away now there was a one time when you know they used to talk about your coppers your twos and your ones and whatever uh, as coppers now if, if get yourself a magnet you can pick up your loose change. Yeah. You see, try it, yeah, yeah. try it. You can pick up your loose change because there's hardly any copper, because copper costs money. <coughs> and they basically <coughs> just put a, you know, a tiny trace amounts to stop them. They do rust. Uh, you, you know, you, you leave your, 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 your so-called, co copper doesn't rust. Copper, you know, you get a slight sort of red, uh, anyway. uh, <laughs> a red oxide on it, but you actually get rust coming off coins now, because the basics mild steel, it's the no, cheapest worth, metal. Not even worth bending down to pick up, are they, coppers? <laughs> well, yeah, well, no, scrap no. metal, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you, get a, you, get, you know, you take down the scrap in a wheelbarrow, don't you? <laughs> okay, so it's all, at the end of the day, it's, it's the central banks, it's coming down to the central banks. Uh, you think that the Bank of England, it was nationalised, in 1946, was it? Seven. Seven yeah. Uh, the building was nationalised. Yeah. yeah, they talk right. about it being nationalised. Oh, and now, of course, it's independent. They're saying it's now independent. Like the BBC is. Uh, <laughs> like the BBC. <laughs> and the IPCC, the Independent <laughs> Police Company. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Really independent. So, uh, I'm preaching to the converted here. <laughs> but the Bank of England, as is the Federal Reserve, Bank of International Settlements, you know, European Central Bank, the IMF, they're basically groups, they're collectives, they're collections of uh, commercial banks. Stakeholders. Yeah, but they're, they're commercial banks. Yeah, I know. Commercial banks, they're, they're nothing more than that. And they, you know, they, they set up this <laughs> as if they're totally, I mean the Federal Reserve, it, it's, not, it's no more federal than Federal Express. Mm -hmm. And there's no reserves. A Bank of England is basically, I mean, it's in the city of London, and I'm sure most people here know that the city of London is actually a corporation in itself. They used to, we used to have corporation buses, you know, because, you know, you know countries aren't, uh, they're, they're basically corporations, they're corporate entities. It, it's incredible, and once you see through this illusion, uh, it, 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 it's quite scary, quite scary. And of course, it's mostly created on a computer screen. So I've been talking about the notes, but basically, if they want to, you know, if, if they need another sort of trillion pounds, dollars, yen, whatever, you get somebody on a computer screen, you know, on a computer in a bank, say, right, let's create it. And they'll print out a piece of paper saying, what's well, an IOU, send it to China or whatever. And, but except China aren't taking them anymore. But they're creating this stuff on the, on a, they're creating it out of thin air. And that's our labor, which they are effectively stealing from us. It's, it, it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's our labor. And this is, our labor is being stolen from us. So, uh, oh, what the bank does, that's just a reminder for me to say, you know, if you're ever uh, on a PC and you're bored and you're of the usual site, 
get onto the Bank of England. There's this wonderful PDF called What the Bank Does. Uh, I can't, no, I, I don't know, I, I forgot to actually download it. But uh, what the bank does is it, basically wonderful. It tells you that you know if you if you if you've got a, a bank note that's a, how they how, how they keep the actual strength of the currency. First thing they say is uh, inflation is caused by people uh, spending too much money. <laughs> inflation is caused by the that they they you don't have to be stupid to realise if you inflate the money supply it causes inflation. Double the money supply, you half the values. It's I mean, it's, it's governments that cause inflation. It is. Always, it is. Always. Yes. Yes. And and they inflate and deflate the money supply depending how they want to manipulate us. I mean, it, it, incredible, incredible. The bank never goes never goes broke. Now, in Monopoly, if the bank ra bank runs out of mon go get when you get home if you've got a Monopoly set, get go and have, get the instructions. If the bank runs out of money, the banker may issue as much as needed by writing on ordinary paper. They, in Monopoly, you can create money. The banker can't go broke if you know if, if there's not enough you know, paper notes. It, it's incredible, incredible. Uh, it made me laugh. Makes me laugh. <laughs> madness, madness. And so just. The bailout of the banks has cost every householder, yeah, every family, four thousand three hundred and fifty pounds, and that's probably a very low estimate. Like sixty-five thousand per person. So how many hours work is that? Depending uh, whether you're a banker or a, <laughs> a lawyer or a, yeah, for myself, that would probably be quite a bit because then work. Yeah, well, quite, quite, and then. You know, quantitative easing, basically creating money out of thin air, not even issuing. Well, you know, well, there's nothing new about it. Is there? No, no, there isn't. Just yeah, just Mugabe was, more than uh, usual. Mugabe was doing it. Just so, the name. Yeah. yeah. Quantitative easing rather than no, printing. Well, uh, printing what, money. what they mean is they're pro they're creating more money than they usually do. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you there. I agree with you. And. Uh, the object of the game is to bankrupt all opponents. Now, in Monopoly, if you buy the modern Monopoly <coughs> set, it actually says the object of the game is to uh, purchase all the property until you know the other players can't play. But in the early, the early actual you know, the early rules, it said it's straight. The object of the game is to bankrupt all opponents, and that's what the central banks do. They bankrupt individuals. They bankrupt countries. They're basically, uh, and we're also at that, that stage where, you know, things are beginning to, you know, basically a lot of people are falling out of the game, and the game's almost over. <laughs> I don't think you can go. No, you can't go to jail because if you could go to jail for being in debt, I think I'd have been, uh, well, I'd have cutting, been banged they're up. They're cutting a long the time prison ago. places anyway. <laughs> Say again, sorry. They're cutting the prison places. They are. So they they are. Do that. Yeah. You'd be in there with Bernie Madoff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there, you know, Bernie Madoff. They say that, you know he was involved with a, a Ponzi scheme, a pyramid scheme. Well, the global financial institution is a pyramid scheme. It's basically, you, you know, you just whilst it keeps going, you know, it, it's it's just. But as soon as it's it, it falls apart, the whole thing comes crashing down. And don't think that uh, he's. Uh, his sort of business model was any different from any other company. It's just that he's failed a little bit, a bit earlier, and he took the rap for it. Okay, you certainly stand a better chance of winning if you know the rules. Okay, and there's the rules of Monopoly. Now, obviously, that they cre you know they, they create money into existence. Uh, and then they charge interest on it. So, uh, if you think that the all the countries are in debt, there's only about three countries which aren't in debt. You would think nobody actually make asks, who are we in debt to? Is there one country? Yeah, you know, is it? Yeah, you know, is there one country that's not in debt that's owed trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars? No, there isn't. 
So can they not just call a moratorium on the debt? Well, I, I would have say, thought... Well, we don't pay it. Oh, well, but it. if you listen to the newspaper, they say, it's very important that we pay our debts. It's very important we pay our debts, you know, because we might get a bad credit rating. Well, I tell you what, I've got an absolutely appalling credit rating. <laughs> you do, when you, when you get as many... Uh, they wiped African devil. There's, there's the... Polish There's some of the... Those aren't all the letters that I've got, but uh, I've had quite a few in my time. I haven't got a particularly good credit rating, but I've got a bank account. I've got a, a, a basic bank account with a go on. I don't have a problem with that. Having, you know, I don't want to borrow any more money. I don't want to borrow any money. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, they say, we've got to pay off the, uh, you know, the, the government debt. Well, it is abs not only... <coughs> To, why, why, why don't we say, you know, the, the reason they're saying that is because the central banks want the money, it's basically going back to the Rothschilds and whatever. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the one... Are you going to talk about at some stage? Uh, yeah, well, I, what I will do is at the end, we'll have a, what I'll try and do is yeah. get through it and then we'll have a little sort of like question and answer and a chance for everyone because if... Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, I just get sidetracked yeah. and, and go off all over the place, and we won't get a chance. What I'm trying to do is get the first bit over with, and then we'll have like a 20 minute break, transfer a, a pint or whatever, and then I'll go on to the second bit, and then we'll have a like, question and answer at the end. Uh, but of course, the idea of paying off the global, you know, the, the debt, this is why I get onto the uh, Bank of England website for the statistics. And I'm not sure whether it's the M2 or the M3 because it's so complex the way they measure it. They just have so many different, you know, you try and work out what each one means. But when you look at the, what the government debt is and you look at the money supply, the amount of money in circulation and the amount of money deposited in bank accounts, it's impossible to pay off the, 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 the government deficit. It's impossible. We, can't, we just can't do it because there's not enough money in circulation. If all the money in circulation, uh, uh, because it, it, it's, it's a con, it's a con. What they want is for us to just pay more and more and more money. It can't be paid off. It's impossible. There's interest on it. it, it it's going up. It, it, it's, this is the problem. When you create money out of thin air mm -hmm. and charge interest on it, what happens is the money supply increases exponentially. Is it, is it a means, basically, of getting your labour? Yes. Well, I think it's a means of ins not just getting our labour. They've got our labour. I think it's a way of enslaving us. Yes. I really do. And I think the sooner we realise that that's the reason for it, uh, the sooner we can break free and say, we don't want to play your game anymore. By the way, there's new information. In America, they've stopped actually publishing the... They have. they have, yeah, yeah. yeah. they have, because I've been sort of looking it up and, and, and sort of searching around trying to find out this stuff, yeah, because it's, it's, it's through the roof, it's through the roof, it's completely mad. Right, so how did we get, get into this mess? Okay, now... This bit of the talk, I will put my arms up, and anyone that uh, knows uh, Jordan Maxwell, uh, for me, he is the sort of like the grandfather of what I call the truth move, movement. <laughs> Some people refer to it as conspiracy theories, but I, I think of it as the truth movement. He could see way beyond other people. You know, Malcolm said at the beginning that. Uh, the reason I can see so far, and a lot of people here can see so far, is because uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And if there's ever been a giant who, uh, and Jordan Maxwell it, it, you know, denies the fact that he can, because he actually says, oh, well, there were people before me. But to be honest, he, was, he could see what a lot of us can see back in the 60s. Now... <coughs> What he talks about is uh, when a ship goes into, and you know, I apologise for those people that are up to speed on this, because I know a lot of you are, but for those people that uh, might not be aware of this, when a ship, you think of a ship, it might go up an estuary or a river, and it's always interesting because 
Jordan Maxwell speaks about the words and how important the words are. And you know, just words like when you think about stock, holding stock, livestock, it, it all goes back. But Jordan Maxwell goes one stage further and he would talk about, right, you know, you get a river. And what do you find on the side of the river? Bank. You have banks on the side of the river. And what are the banks doing? Well, they seem to be sort of, they, there seems to be a flow of, of current, which is the, the currency. So the banks seem to control the currency, don't they? It, it, it's, it's, it sounds just like it's, it, it's but, but the more you go into this, the more you think, hang on, th this fraud has been going on for so long that it's in our language. Like, you know, stock and, and title and the words capital and, yeah, yeah. So, you get a ship and it goes into harbour and it's known to, you know, when it ties up, it's known to go into its berth. It has birth. And not only does that, there's paperwork involved when it goes into harbour because it has what's called a shipping manifest. And it's basically, uh, basically, it has to say what is manifest. So it's, it's going to have, uh, perhaps it might have toy, Toyotas or flat screen TVs or whatever it is, it's just turned up. So they have to write down what it is, hand it over to the, you know, to the dock, uh, and the harbour master will say, right, okay, it's no longer, uh, and basically the captain, <coughs> okay, who's in charge of the uh, uh, capital, <laughs> Uh, he basically hands over title to the harbour master and it can then be offloaded. Now, when a child is born. Let's be John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when a child is born, the waters break and the child travels down the birth canal. Doesn't it? There's no paperwork involved. <laughs> I think you're laughing. This is this is there's paperwork involved, which you know basically the parents and the doctor, the doc, has to sign the paperwork, and they create a certificate of birth. Now you're a person. And now you're a person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From this piece of paper, it's not more fundamental than that. These are not very very hard. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. right. But it's been called sperm. Well, there, oh. there is that. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've missed out the gory details. Yeah. I'm just uh, yeah. So, uh, so you have the birth certificate, the certificate that the child has manifest. The child has manifest. It suddenly turned up, but it's handed over. The word register, when you register a birth, the word register comes from regis, which means to hand title, that word title again. Title, case, capital, all these words come up. Hand title to the crown. The crown, what's the crown? State. The state. Yeah, is it the state? Well, I think so. In fact, well. People talk about the crown being the royal family. But, well, city of London. I believe the Crown is the City of London. What you're doing when you register a child is, in this country, you're handing title to the, the corporation trading as the City of London. Go on to TPUC and you can look up a lot of government bodies in Dun and Bradstreet. And you, know, you can see that a lot of these government bodies are, in fact, just private trading companies. You've just all the, all the signed your companies. child over to a private corporation who then own your child. If you don't take care of your child, they can come and have it back. Yeah, they, know. <laughs> they do, they all do, and they're doing this. All the political fathers are with the corporations. That's right, yeah, yeah, that's right. <coughs> it, it's, it's this corporate, and you're a corporate, <laughs> you're a corporate entity. You're a corporation because they've created this certificate. It's interesting. Now uh, that corporation, it, of course, is your token. To, you know, I said I'd come back to it. That's your token to play the game. 
It's interesting on the vehicle licensing as well. You're the registered keeper. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it's interesting when you go into a court, you know, to you know to go and play games as, as you do in a court. You have the referee in black, don't you? And you, you know, yeah, uh, uh, you know, totally bolstering. He doesn't really care who wins, you know. Uh, <laughs> but what's interesting in court is you have to go into the dock because you have to be because it's an admiralty court. It's not a common law court. It's not for people of the land. It's an admiralty court because it's all fictitious entities. This is admiralty law. This is the law of the sea. It's not law, law of the land. And under lawful rebellion, what we're trying to do is bring back the law of the land, common law, our law, law of God, call it what you will, you know, not this admiralty statute law. So that's your, basically, now that certificate is then, they, what they do, they create a bond with that certificate and it's floated on the market because of course it has to be floated because it's all that admiralty law you notice how they float things on the market it, it, it's it's incredible and apparently those people have done the research what was i know we've got some uh, well uh, well informed people in the audience here what are, what are these going for 65 well no sorry at the moment the office of national statistics reckon that all of, about two weeks ago, they, they announced that all of us, man, woman and child, are actually in debt for about 65 grand each. Right. Well, I've got well, figures that, that are higher than that. But no, small. I'm not talking about the share of the so-called national debt. It's, as I'm sure a lot of people realise, that these birth certificates mm. are then, they create a bond. Because the country is bankrupt, there's no way that the central banks are going to lend the government lend the government money, yeah, create money unless they've actually got some sort of uh, collateral. 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 Yeah. We're the collateral. We're the collateral, and these things are. I, I can't, there are different figures being banded around for the amount. It's your future point, earning potential, basically. Yeah, it's your future earning potential. Yeah, exactly. So you don't work for nothing until it's yeah. paid off. Which, which is one of the reasons why they want so many women working. Because they're worth more working because of the bond potential. That's yes, right. That's yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. the reason yeah. for that. <laughs> so there, we end up in bondage, don't we? <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. I've been, I've been told that I shouldn't be used the word, uh, yeah. So we become the livestock, don't we? What do you think that figure is to, that uh, that person said it is worth then? Because we didn't actually get a figure. Then. I don't know. Uh, I've been told it's... Into, like has anyone done... I, I know there's some people who read some really esoteric... Is it covered in the... I know uh, in the... Uh, Thomas Anderson? Yeah, I think it's in the millions. It's in the millions. Oh, yeah. more, yeah. It's yeah. got to be. Yeah. It's got to be if you think I your lifetime is potential. Well yeah. Limitless, but, yeah. But there must be a figure. Yeah. 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 So basically, you've been unwittingly sold into slavery. So, and there you go. You know, there you go. He's mad. Now, the gr so uh, another way of looking at this is. If you imagine your, you know, say if you came from a very wealthy family and your parents, uh, when you were very, very young, they put, say, okay, let's call it a million pounds, into a trust fund for you. And you weren't allowed to access this or you didn't get control of it until you were, say, 21. But as a child, what you could do is your parents would give you pocket money but you would have to sign for it, okay, because it would come out of your trust fund, so you're allowed a certain amount. So you'd give them a signature, say, so, uh, yeah, mum, can I have a tenant? Yeah, sign here, they give you that. But then, if your parents were very naughty, instead of saying, there you go, sign here, there you go, you can have it, it's yours, it's part of your trust fund. If your parents are very, very naughty and work, weren't working in your best interest, what they would do, let's say, sign here, there you go, right, you as a tenor. 
There's your tailor, but you owe it to us now, and I want interest on top. Now, if you're a really bright kid, you say, hang on, you've got my signature. That signature allows me to access my trust fund. And that's what's happening with the banks. They need your signature. Very important they have your signature. Because without, when, you know, when they're giving you money, for, that's why they, they, they not they don't want to give you loads of money. Because they're accessing your bond. That's where they're creating, that's where this fictitious money comes from. It's all, you know, it's all, it's all thin air. It's all great. But what they're doing is effectively accessing your bond. But then, this is where the fraud comes in. Because, you know, you're already the collateral they're using to create this money. So it's basically our money. And there are, I keep hearing about people who have successfully, uh, or I hear rumours of people who have successfully accessed their bond. But that's all I've heard. I don't, as I, as I say, we, we've got some very well educated people in the room here. Has anyone come across first hand evidence of, Someone who is successful. One guy in Derby who had his uh, student loan paid off. Right. Um, he wrote to, I forget who he was, but one of the second one of the MPs, right. um, telling him he wanted to pay him off out of his bond and it was paid off. Brilliant. Brilliant. So it is, it is possible. It is possible. Yeah, yeah. It's still a bit rare, but <laughs> if the way. The way I see this whole thing, yeah, lots of us are all trying different different things, and on I know on some forums a lot of people start arguing about the best way of doing it. You know, oh, use accepted for value, no, use this, no, use stop. You know, a lot of different ways. The way I see it is, if we're trying to break in to a fortress, and we get some people going at the front, you know, some people going at the back, some people like parachuting in. Sooner or later, we're going to find a way in, and when we do, we're going to make it common knowledge, and everyone's going to go streaming in, and that's what I think we're doing here today, and yeah, we're doing in the yeah in the last few months, and yeah, you know, I say that some of the guys here that have been working on the forum are way ahead of me now, and I've now actually you know in, inviting uh, some of them to give me a hand with the website so I can update the website. Yeah, with the current information that they've been working on, and especially you, Mark, uh, as you're well aware of, so, uh, for which I am indebted. <laughs> right, how to win the game. Now, I'm going to go through this fairly, I'm just going to look at the time. Yeah, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because the information is up on the internet and uh, you, can, you, know, you can go through it. So I'm, I'm going to, just going to go through it fairly quickly. Okay, but I do like this, uh, it was a nice little quote. The secret of winning the game for everyone is to assume a deficiency of love in your opponent and then apply some. When you get scumbag debt collectors phoning you up, giving you a load of grief, remember they are human beings. They are children of God, goddess, whatever you want to hear, whatever your understanding is, just like ourselves. They are different aspects of ourselves. So. It, it, it's a shame that you know that they do the job that they do, and with a bit of encouragement from us, they'll go and find a more caring job in the <coughs> community. But uh, you know, we do have to realise that they are human beings, and so you know, we have to. Uh, I think dealing with them, sort of, uh, with yeah, so, you know, whether it's love or respect or whatever, but we do have to be, you know. It, it, it is tempting to tell them to fuck off, but um, <laughs> you should just go up and hug them like Charlie B. Well, I, I think he, yeah, 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 he still gets arrested, doesn't he? Yeah. So, credit card uh, for credit cards and banking debts, and this is just a really quick uh, overview because, uh, and as I say, there's loads more on the forum, and we're going to get the f information uh, from the forum really updated onto the website soon but this is the unupdated. So don't use it for mortgages just yet. There are some uh, specialist sites for mortgages uh, or utility companies. Uh, there is, inf well, there's specific information on utility companies and people are having a little bit of success, uh, but speak to Mark about that. Okay, 
So, or well, don't use it until you know what you're doing anyway. So, these are some of the sort of things that you get through some of the letters. Uh, basically, what we do on Get Out of Debt Free, we ask, uh, you know, basically, uh, we ask for an invoice. We ask for it in our name, not the corporate fictitious name in capital letters or with Mr. or Mrs. or Ms. in front of it. We ask for it in our name as the human being, not your fictitious corporate entity name. Uh, you, ask for, you, ask, you ask if you've got a contract. And we ask debt collectors sometimes just for proof of agency. Uh, and you give them 10 days. Uh, if they don't respond, basically you say, well, we don't owe you anything, or the debt's already been paid. And you also add things like any negative remarks you make to a credit scoring agency will be removed. You'll be lucky if they do that. Uh, and also, uh, if you're like Mark, you will also put in your fee schedule, which basically tells them what you're going to charge them for every single letter you write to them. <laughs> <laughs> and you charge an awful lot more for your letters than they charge for theirs. <laughs> and then you start sending them invoices as well. John, has anybody got aware of you doing that? Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sure. I've had a lot of letters, but I've never uh, well, actually got the money. I have years ago, before I came across any of this, um, must be 15, 20 years ago, I was at Union, one of the banks started sending me letters for being over all the usual. And I heard somewhere that sort of like you can invoice them for each letter you send, so I just didn't match the charges with the right. invoices I was charging, right. and right. they just cancelled it out. And, Brilliant. The Brilliant. and this is, yeah, 15, 20 years ago, I've looked at them, and just thought that. <laughs> Mark, what are you charging for a letter these days? £1,000. £100 if you pay that back. And sign return for a letter to them. Yeah. Sorry. People are laughing when you are suggesting charging them. I think that's preferred. It is. It is. Remember, they are no different from you. If they, you know, as soon as we step into our power and say enough is enough, you know, uh, start, we always think, oh, it's the banks, it's them, it's, you know, we're little people, they're big people. They've always been, no, we are sovereign beings. We are flesh and blood. They are fictitious corporate entities. Yeah. We're far more powerful than they are. They're, they're fictitious. They're not real. We're real. We're flesh and blood, <laughs> I think. <laughs> you know, so. John, we still sort of actually got a letter from the court with his flesh and blood name. The only thing missing was the colon. Right. He's also um, issued them with a copyright uh, notice, yeah. and he, they, got, they got a letter back to him, delivered to our care of just which was our house, to unknown. Yeah. 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 He did put his name on the letter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do not, under any circumstances, speak to him on the phone. Uh, there's an asterisk on that one, because uh, I would say, don't offer to pay them anything, especially with debt collectors. If you offer to pay a pound a week, immediately you're contracting with them. And as soon as you contract with them, then they can have you for the whole lot. Because they say, well, what can you afford? Oh, a pound a month. I know this because I fell into the trap years ago. Yeah. But uh, I think that was about, I think they probably had a fiver out of me over five months before I stopped paying them. And that's the only time I've ever paid a debt collector before I was aware of all this sort of stuff. But yeah, you know, it's before I smelt the rat and realised there was something very wrong. Uh, don't get worried, scared, or intimidated by them. Uh, oh, and don't speak to them on the phone unless you refuse to be intimidated <coughs> by them. Now, <laughs> I've got a few different strategies. I won't go through. I haven't got time to go through the whole thing because I want to stop for a break in a second uh, because there's another half where I want to talk about the sort of what the future of the banking system I think holds for us, but. When, you know, what I've been doing with debt collectors is, what they do is ask you security questions. So before you talk to them, ask them some security questions. Make a list of security questions. Yes, sir. I find an effective um, ploy if, if one of these organizations phones you up and they say, oh, may I speak to Mr. Williams? Who's calling? And then very often they'll say, oh, um, is Mr. Williams there? And you say, well, I can't tell you unless you tell me who's calling. Yes. And they, then they say, well, we, we can't, it's data protection. 
Well, in that case, I can't tell you anything. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. What I do is ask some security questions. I ask them for their uh, full name. I ask them for that. They don't often give. Sometimes they'll give their surname. Sometimes they won't. Uh, uh, ask them for their job title. I'll ask them for their line manager. Ask them for their direct line. Ask them for their mobile phone number. <laughs> all this stuff. Now they legally have to give you their full name. Uh, they're working in the financial industry. They have to really, be. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. I worked for um, Nationwide Building Society. Because a lot of them <laughs> will forgive you. <laughs> uh, that's that's really good information. Thank you. Uh, because I know a lot of debt collectors won't give their. Uh, you know, a lot of people that work for these debt collection. Uh, scumbag companies. Uh, they they don't work. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting to know. But once and you have a bit of fun with this because once they oh of course yeah after they answer all your uh, you know questions uh, then you, then they say oh can we ask you some security questions I'm sorry I, I, I say I'm sorry that I, I don't give my personal details over the phone. Is there anything else I can help you with? Because <laughs> I'm willing to help you. You seem like a very friendly person. Uh, I've got another friend of ours, uh, Ian Thornley, who's brilliant at letters. He actually ends up in long conversations with them. Uh, and so, you know, he starts sort of talking to them as like, you know, what are you doing you know, doing this? Do you realize that, you know, it's totally fraudulent? I don't do that. But he does. He loves just chatting to them and, and sort of like uh, educating them. So it, it's it's great fun. But of course, the next time they phone, immediately you, you say when you say, "Oh, what's your uh, your direct line? Is it?" Da, 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 and then you wait for the last few digits, and then sort of, and is your line manager so and so? And they're always thinking like you're asking them, you know. <laughs> and, and, it's, and after a while, I, I had this where this you know debt collection agency phoned up different person every time. They just stopped after four days. It's, it, it's a really quick work. And I was sort of saying, oh, you know, it was, a, it was such a sh I was really looking forward to their calls every day as well. So <laughs> it, what it is, it's empowering. It's, it's yep. just turning the tables round. When they first started phoning me, I was scared. I was crapping myself. Yep. I thought I was going to go to court. I thought I failed as a human being because I was in debt. Uh, my, I was giving all my energy away to them. Now, it's like you just, and all it is is, is changing your attitude, changing what's in here. Yes, sir? Surely, John, they would still take you to court, wouldn't they? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but we've got strategies all the way through for that. But yeah, to be honest, I've, I, I don't know how much I, I've, I've sort of uh, uh, not paid them, uh, but it's, it's quite, it's, it's a fair bit. Uh, I have never been taken to court. I've had one company uh, send me, start CCJ proceedings on me. At the time, I gave them a statutory declaration of true name, signed by a solicitor. Uh, basically, you say all the versions of the name that I was, which was Jonathan Witterick, but not Mr. But all the things, uppercase, Mr. Uh, no, that's not me. And sent them one of those in and... Uh, Basically, they didn't go any further. So, but those aren't working particularly well. And as I say, there are guys on the forum with a lot of better technology now. I, I had one on a, um, a parking ticket I caught in Manchester. It was, um, I was about five minutes over. So I, I, I bought the next period of, of time for about one pound fifty, and sent in a. Um, the, the, the original of, of, of the next period with the, um, the, the, the statutory thing which was stuck on the windscreen not filled out and then I got all the rest and I had correspondence for, for about sort of six to eight months including um, um, letters from a uh, debt collecting agency running into the bill the, the debt up to about 300 and some odd pounds yeah. and I ignored the lot and, it, and it, there's been nothing for them for about six months That is another, of course ignoring them Although I, I don't like to do it because it's almost like uh, not playing the game, uh, but it, it's, it's probably good. It is actually a good strategy. Okay, remember that debt collectors purchase. Remember that debt collectors purchase the debt, so-called debt. There's no debt uh, from the banks for around ten p in the pound. 
Yes. I'm speaking to a solicitor, and uh, he says they purchased it originally for 25 pence in the pound, yes. and then when you sell it on, it's 10 pence. Ah, uh, right, yeah, yeah. I know it goes down, and it's like, uh, I think of the debt collectors like bottom feeders. They're the, the fish <laughs> at the bottom of the food train. And, you know, and, and what they do, they just like chew on anything. And, you know, if they chew on something and it tastes good, then, you know, they'll have a bit more of a chew on it. If they, if they chew on something and it tastes like crap, then they're going to spit it out. And you want to make sure that you're the one that, you know, they go, oh, my God, no, really good. let's go for something a bit easier. That was actually a solicitor debt collector I was speaking to. I was trying to get them to uh, enforce some of my bills. But <laughs> he read through it and decided, and decided not to get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And just remember that a verbal agreement with a debt collector is more enforceable than the unilateral one you, with the bank. Unilateral being one-sided. Because of course you sign your you, you know your credit card agreement, they don't. That's verbal on a recorded telephone call. On a recorded telephone. They always say they. Uh, oh, that's the other thing, of course. When they do phone you, uh, just say that because uh, they always say, oh yes, we'll be recording this for training purposes. They'll be recording it so that they can actually get you into a verbal contract. Okay. But of course, you tell them, uh, and if most phones these days will record quite easily, but uh, legally you have to tell them, and it's great fun. So, excuse me, I will be uh, recording this conversation for training purposes, uh, and it may appear on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the, the word may mean will. will. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah. You understand your legalese. <laughs> right. So, uh, oh, great fun. Uh, and don't agree to pay them anything unless they can provide the evidence. They can't provide the evidence, you don't pay. I have actually, uh, I do a uh, meditation group uh, and there was a lady, uh, when I was telling them what I did, and she actually said, uh, well I couldn't possibly do what you do because I go to a spiritualist church and there, you know, we learn personal responsibility. <laughs> and I said to her, I said to her, I said to her, I take my personal responsibility very, very seriously. And my personal responsibility is to highlight the fraud which is going on. And by paying a penny of it, all you're doing, it's like, if you get a load of heavies trying to exalt, you know, you know, trying to extort money from you and you pay them, what you're doing, you're keeping the protection racket going. Yeah. And by saying, sorry, I'm not going to play your game, whether it's your TV license, whether it's court fines, whether, you know, whether it's, you know, it, it, it's credit cards, you know, uh, it, it's totally fraudulent, totally fraudulent. So general rules, always be truthful. We're trying to set the example here. So don't, you know, there's no reason why we've got to lie, you know. Uh, respond politely, they're human beings. You know, we're gonna treat them with respect. Uh, it's difficult, I had a, a bailiff once and I, I did almost lose my temper with him, but uh, yeah. Always act honorably, you know, which is very much like truthfully. Uh, you know, if, uh, that's why I try not to ignore them. Uh, I must admit, I do occasionally. Uh, act lawfully, not necessarily legally, but within common law, which is basically you don't use fraud in your contracts. Uh, do not get greedy. If you're going to get greedy, all you're doing, if you think, fantastic, I can just get loads of credit cards and I'm going to go and buy a Ferrari or a Porsche or something, you're just turning into what they are. We're trying to set the example here. You know, don't go hungry. You know, if you need you know need money for food or to do what you're doing or to spread the word, then use your credit cards to do that. But I wouldn't. Yeah, don't get greedy because we're trying to set the example. We're trying to. They are the ones that are you know that have basically got their heads in, in the troughs. You know, and we're trying to set the examples to them. Ah, oh, right, break. Right, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much.